Hi. The purpose of these uh, videos, this video and the ones I hopefully will be able to shoot after this, are to chronicle my uh, transition from a Visual Basic, Visual Basic for Application, Minitab uh, platform analyst in the RM reliability community over to the uh, .NET, larger .NET framework, and our platform for doing reliability maintainability analysis. Um, <clears throat> so, um, making these recordings so that I can catalog any kind of uh, mistakes I might make or shortcuts that I might take or just a general practice of uh, getting uh, familiar with R, getting familiar with uh, some of the new languages in the .NET environment uh, so that people who are more experienced than myself can uh, kind of uh, <clears throat> tell me where I made mistakes or indicate uh, choices that I made that may uh, later on make it more difficult for me to uh, achieve the goals I wanted to. And for people who are less experienced for me, maybe see some of the little pitfalls that I've uh, uh, learned along the way and help them avoid it and just give some general feedback that uh, we're uh, all on the same track. So what you see in front of you right now is the R Project uh, website. And uh, for me right now, I understand R is basically programming language, more of a scripting language with a large um, volume of libraries related to graphical and statistical uh, functions. And that's what I tend to think of it as, and that's what I'll be using it as as I first uh, get into it. If you go on this website, you can download R and install it. If you're running a 64-bit, uh, you'll see an interface much like this, a console, where you'll be able to put in vectors, uh, do vector math, and do some plotting, uh, be able to call functions that are in uh, extension libraries for R. And uh, best as I understand it, people who are very good with R can do almost everything that they want to do in the R environment. There's a, a extensive amount of libraries that allow you to do many things. Uh, so there's additional resources out there to get more familiar with R. I'm still reading them. Uh, so this is really, I'm not going to go into that too much. So I, I came here from an IDE environment in which um, I, just, I wasn't just putting in uh, single lines and uh, some of the flexibility of uh, adding libraries to that environment. So there's some things I've gotten used to. And so I, I gravitated towards RStudio. Uh, RStudio, if you go to this website, uh, rstudio.com website, you'll be able to download uh, that software and you'll get this. Uh, it provides some uh, shortcuts to importing data, uh, adding packages, um, you, you skip over the install statement, you can go uh, right over here, click on the packages, you can browse for packages that you download. Um, so this is a step up in uh, user interface uh, with R, and I gravitated towards this. I um, and then, uh, but what, what my real, you know, where I came from, I was scripting and programming in Visual Basic, and uh, doing handing off to Minitab to do the heavy lifting in statistics, and uh, with Visual Basics, I had a, the .NET framework uh, structure to help me along. And coming all over to here to R, even with R Studio, uh, it was a good bit of a, a leap up, right? So um, if you're familiar, yeah, if you have the same line of thinking as I do, that I drill down through the uh, base class library, t through inheritances to find the of functions and classes that do the kind of things I want to. When you come over here and you get uh, uh, basically a, a collection of peer um, packages that hold a lot of functions, you start thinking to yourself, wow, I'm going to be doing a lot of memorization of uh, packages. So I wanted to be able to utilize the .NET framework still, even though uh, I fundamentally want to use the extensive library packages of R. So having uh, gone to the triangle 
.NET user group. Um, it was kind of discussed that that may still be a viable option. There may be a .NET, um, excuse me, a Visual Basic um, solution for that. And um, so uh, what I have on my computer here is Visual Basic um, Express 2013 for Windows Desktop. Now you can get that from Microsoft. I just uh, search in any of your favorite search engines for Visual Studio Express. There's going to be multiple options on what you can get. Uh, web, there'll be desktop, um, there'll be Team Foundation Server. I'm using desktop. Um, it'll become apparent that uh, your options on this will, will somewhat be boxed if you go down the same path I do here. Okay, so um, before I got over to here, I, uh, I was thinking, well, I want to do some extensive uh, looping programming with uh, R. I'd like to use some language that I have a little bit more familiarity with as my base point for that. Uh, so I spent a good bit of time, um, a few hours at least, uh, researching uh, RCPP. So I understand that's a totally powerful uh, package for R and strong uh, C++ uh, programmers uh, may utilize that. So they got me thinking that uh, I would be coming into R, and I'll, I'll go here, and, and installing a, a lot of packages. So uh, that my basic uh, pathway f to get functionality out of R would be through adding packages to the R installation or the R solution so that uh, I could use those function sets even and those function sets would even be the ones that would allow me to reach out to other languages. Um, in discussing using uh, the .NET framework, uh, one of the recommendations that was uh, put my way was to go out and grab um, r.net. And let me see if I've got it here. There we go. r.net. So, you know, if you spend a little bit of time thinking, well, maybe I'll use R, C++, and then someone says, well, go get our .NET. That'll help you with uh, your .NET languages. Uh, I was thinking, okay, well, this is obviously a R package that I'll have to install. You know, so you come, you download it. Um, let's see, let's just download it. Uh, And you see um, DLL files. <laughs> um, so th that's not something you install in R. Um, H uh, XML files, DLL files, those don't get installed in R. Um, so with a little bit of uh, more reading and, and falling back onto some of my uh, some things I knew, I uh, I said, no, I'll come into Visual Studios and through the Solution Template or Solution Explorer, I've got references. I know I can add DLLs in here. I'll add a reference. Uh, you know, if I was using Minitab, there'd be, uh, you know, I come down here, I'd find the Minitab uh, DLL and I would uh, select it. And then I'd be able to use some, um, you know, with Minitab, you know, uh, and start passing uh, command lines into Minitab through that uh, interface. Um, so having seen the .NET uh, files, I said, okay, well, what I'll do is I'll just come in here, I'll browse for them, find .NET, I'm up and running. Okay, so that, that's great. I'm going to skip that step actually though because um, <clears throat> although .NET, although I got an opportunity to play with .NET, uh, .NET, let me bring it back up, uh, .NET seemed 
to indicate that the way that you get to our functionality is through um, setting up an instance that like, uh, you know, if this was um, Visual Basics, this would be with, uh, you know, Minitab, you know, engine as Minitab uh, and application. Come down here, you uh, engine, set symbol, then I pass what I would have kind of typed into our studio, then I come down here to next and I tell it to evaluate what I would have typed in our studio. Um, and that was fine, but now, now I'm, a, uh, I'm a step removed from the functions that I want to exploit that are in packages in R, and I don't know them well enough to know their parameters and arguments uh, and to just type them in. I would have to go to R, figure out the parameters and arguments that I want, come back into my code, and uh, and type them out. Uh, that said, I'm I'm only saying that from a very you know cursory amount of effort put into understanding the .NET. But uh, that was the first hurdle that I uh, came across. And, and as you can see here, these are you know if I want to get a numeric vector in uh, R, a real vector in R, the, you know here's the .NET um, uh, expression for that. So uh, that pinged, that uh, got me to ping the .NET user group to, hey, um, you know, how do I, well, where's some tutorials on R.NET so that I can, uh, you know, really learn this so that uh, I can get through the R.NET interface and get back to learning uh, the package structure uh, that is R. And one of the recommendations was, uh, you might want to look at a type converter. And the recommendation was, well, why don't you uh, look at the R type, R, um, F sharp R type provider. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I'm thinking again, so based on looking at this website, you can have to distinguish, is this something I, I put in R? Is this something I put in .NET? Okay, so um, there wasn't a download for this, actually. Uh, this was the first time I was actually going to have to use the, um, let me see if I can get there, uh, the uh, new get package um, interface in Visual Studios, right? So like I said, I go over there, add reference, and uh, basically pop out references that uh, had been added when I installed software packages um, on my computer. So um, to be able to use the R type provider, F sharp R type provider, you'll come down here and um, add this line to your uh, package manager console. Okay, so let's go back to Visual Studios. Okay, well, well I'm looking at F sharp. Oh, okay, so <clears throat> why was I interested in the .NET framework? Well, because I'm a Visual Basic guy, and I want to be able to just leverage off of what I already know. Make it easy for me. Uh, let me program with Visual Basic and a direct interface with uh, with R. Uh, okay, well, that was R.NET, and uh, I whined about that almost immediately. And someone said, well, okay, well, uh, the most direct interface is... Uh, uh, type provider is going to require you you get up to speed on F sharp and and by the way F sharp is a good data analyst uh, programming language so you might want to invest